Uh, hello, uh, thank you for coming to my talk. Um, my name is Masayu Shishika from Sony. Uh, so my talk is about your Arthos called NatX, so not Linux. And by the way, did you see uh, our demonstration at the technical showcase? OK, <laughs> thank you. So actually, we started this project uh, almost three years ago. And uh, before this project, we released a Linux-based uh, audio player called Workman um, just uh, in 2007, so just uh, 10 years ago. So which has an uh, ARM9, not Cortex-9, uh, of course. Um, then we released an uh, Android-based uh, audio player in 2011, which has a uh, dual Cortex-9. And when we started this project, so we investigated uh, uh, existing operating system, including UC Linux. But unfortunately, the processor, which I, uh, which I will explain later, uh, cannot have a DRAM, but only has an internal SRAM. And some products does not have a uh, SPI flash, so uh, due to uh, size and cost uh, issues. So, which means that, that uh, all programs uh, have to run on internal SRAM. So we had to uh, use uh, real-time OS for our project. So here is the attend of today's talk. The, uh, firstly, I introduce our products and discuss uh, typical software development and why we chose the NATX. Then I will explain um, how we put the NATX to our microcontroller and explain uh, how we uh, implemented um, feature enhancements such as uh, power management and um, fast error rolling. Then I will explain uh, uh, C++ 11 and uh, debugging and testing and including ADB. And finally, I will show you uh, some short demo videos, which uh, is almost same as uh, the last night's um, technical showcase. So uh, these are our first three products, so two IC recorders and one audio player, which we released uh, in late 2015 and early 2016. These, these IC records support micro SDHC and uh, micro SDXC, which has a larger capacity than SDHC, for example, um, 64 gigabyte. Also, they support audio signal processing, such as digital pitch control. The second one is called ICD SX series, which support high resolution audio recording up to 96K 24 bit, as well as um, uh, high resolution playback up to 192K 24 bits. And this model has uh, Bluetooth, uh, which is used for wireless control with uh, Lake like Remote app on smartphone. And the last one is called the Workman WS3, and which actually th this device is very small, and uh, but it supports uh, ambient sound more, and uh, it's playback. It can playback uh, music up to uh, twelve hours. And actually, we released one more IC recorder last year, and uh, we will soon uh, release one more Workman, which has a uh, Bluetooth headset features, so like this WS3. So uh, this table shows uh, internal hardware components. And as you can see this table, so there are so many differences between the products. For example, uh, audio part is different. Maybe uh, here, audio codec is different. So display is also different. So, and SX series uh, has a SPA flash and uh, NFC and Bluetooth. But uh, there is uh, important things um, Two important things are uh, in this chart. The first one is um, release schedule. Actually, it was very tough for us to release all of this software in just four months. So we have to consider um, productivity as well as uh, quality in software development. And the other one is uh, display support without SPA flash. Actually, it consumes more internal SRAMs than other products. And as I mentioned earlier, the microcontroller does not support SVRAM. 
So uh, we had to consider uh, some dynamic application loading and the core size reduction. And this table shows a typical software development. And here I divided in a product model into uh, uh, three categories. And perhaps uh, most of you are know uh, 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 Android or Linux based, but this Android uh, Linux model has rich hardware, so such as a Cortex L series and uh, memory size is much more higher capacity. And usually uh, we can use our uh, open source based uh, development tools such as GCC or GDB and uh, ADB, or just such an open tool will be uh, used for uh, actual software development. However, a typical uh, environment for a software environment for uh, outer space is uh, slightly different. Of course, uh, CPU is not so fast, actually, uh, Cortex M series, and the clock is uh, almost 100 or 200 megahertz, and memory size is not so large, and uh, typical use, uh, typically, uh, tool chain or um, some tools are provided by uh, MCU vendor. And uh, however, we have uh, much experience with um, Linux or Android-based uh, software development. So we had to uh, deeply consider so how we apply uh, these software development approach into our Artos model. And actually, so there is so many Artoses in the world now. For example, um, free Artos and Contic or, and uh, TBOS and so on. So firstly, so we had to uh, find uh, the best Artos for our development. And uh, finally, so we decided to use the Natex. So perhaps most of you are not familiar with. So recently, the Natex is uh, getting popular, for example, um, some drone project, maybe PX4, maybe some uh, for uh, its flight controller. And uh, maybe uh, in uh, this week, <laughs> Samsung announced uh, Tizen RT, so which is based on uh, Linux, uh, Natex. So Natex is uh, getting more popular. But when we started the project, Natex is not so popular. But uh, here, um, the, as you can see, this uh, website, the Natex has uh, so many key features, but it's scalable and portable. And uh, the important thing is, uh, um, most important thing is uh, projects and RPC support. Because we have been uh, much ex experience uh, with uh, Linux and Android world. So this project support is very useful to reduce, uh, to reuse so existing software. And as well as uh, we can reduce uh, training cost. So training cost and the communication cost so between uh, software engineers. And also uh, ELF support is uh, also um, very important for us because our product has uh, so many uh, features. So, but, um, uh, hardware resource is very limited. So we had to uh, divide one big uh, application into more smaller ones. And other uh, features like um, driver framework and Linux configuration and many uh, MCU and board supports, these are very uh, useful for uh, system software engineers. And finally, um, BSD license is very uh, useful and perfect for us. And these are technical challenges in our project. As I wrote in Abstract, uh, we ported the NatX to a microcontroller by ourselves with using the open tools such as OpenOCD. And, and considering a small RAM size and reusing existing software were also big challenging items for us. And finally, uh, uh, we applied modern software technologies uh, with these tools and the services like uh, QMU and C++11 and GitHub and Jenkins to improve uh, productivity and uh, software quality. So this is very uh, rough software stack, so which contains uh, several components, including applications. And for example, uh, QMU, so which is a CPU emulator, and this is uh, this emulator is used for software porting. 
And here, uh, MCU is not actually not a software component, but I put it here uh, to compare with QMU. And as for open system, we uh, chose uh, Natex 7.5 because a uh, little bit old version. And uh, regarding the tool, uh, we decided to use uh, GCC 4.8, uh, which supports C++ 11, and OpenCD 0.9 in development version, so which supports SWD, so serial wire debug. So in t today's talk, uh, I will mainly focus on this, uh, this yellow box. So next slide shows the feature list of se on semiconductors as uh, LCA 23450, so which we use in our products. The microcontroller has a Cortex M3 dual core, but uh, currently only single core is used. And uh, also it has a DSP, uh, 32 b fixed point dual Mac DSP. And it, it has an internal SRAM, and the switch capacity is a little uh, larger than typical as microcontroller has. And also it supports high resolution audio, so up to 192K, 32-bit. So in addition, uh, it has a hardware logic, such as uh, MP3 encoder and decoder to reduce power consumption. So of course, it supports standard peripherals like um, USB, SPI, I2C, and it can operate at your two different voltages, for example, 1.2 volt and 1.2 to uh, zero board, so which depends on um, actual uh, speed. So from this side, I will explain um, how we ported the NATX to the microcontroller. So actually, so we really appreciate that uh, on semiconductor provides us a FPGA code. And as you can see uh, in this picture, the system consists of so several boards. For example, this is a um, Xilinx FPGA board here, and this is an IO board, and it includes an EMS here, and uh, SD card here, and audio board here, and display card here, and Bluetooth, and SWD board. And the actual clock speed was not so fast as we expected, so just 20 megahertz. But we finished um, porting so most of these features so before we received the engineering samples. And after we received the engine samples, we uh, tested the EMMC board and uh, power management and suspended regime, so which we could not test with the FPGA. And to start porting the NATX, so firstly, we had to set up uh, OpenOCD open on chip developer so by writing OpenOCD scripts. So without this tool, uh, we cannot boot the microcontroller and to connect the OpenOCD to the microcontroller, so with SWD, so serial wire debug, so we use a popular FTDI chip, so perhaps some of you might know. And actually, so when we started this project, uh, OpenOCD did not officially support SWD, but uh, it was so lucky for us that uh, SWD support was officially so merged into the master branch, so just before we received the FGA. And this screen shows the uh, shows OpenOCD, so detects uh, uh, this microcontroller. Perhaps, uh, sorry, uh, it might be difficult to read, but please download uh, my so presentation, presentation slide from the uh, conference website. So next is not exporting. So in today's talk, uh, I will not explain standard peripherals, but explain the microcontroller specific features. And actually, um, EMMC uh, SD is one of the standard peripherals, but here I, I have a special topics to mention. And as you can see uh, this chart, um, we implemented the driver with uh, using a broker device API. However, so we did not use uh, EMMC SD protocol driver in the NATOX. Instead, we uh, the driver calls are ROM APIs, which on semiconductor provides. So for example, identify card and read, read sector and write sector, so such APIs are provided in ROM API. And due to uh, ROM code restriction, we had to use uh, fixed partitions. And also we, uh, the driver uses DMA to reduce uh, CPU load, load works, 
And uh, it works with um, a hot pole dimer, so which is newly uh, introduced uh, to detect the SD card. So next is a file system. Actually, uh, NATX supports uh, several file systems, such as uh, PROCFS and VFAT. So in our project, we use uh, PROCFS for debugging and wake lock, and uh, VFAT file systems are used to store program files properties and uh, databases. And also, we added the so-called EB file, so which uh, on semiconductor provides to support as export and IC record specific APIs, so such as DBI. The name of EB file might be uh, confusing, but uh, so they gave this name. So here, please remember that EB file uh, just supports IC uh, record specific uh, features, and so including uh, export. And this screenshot shows the uh, uh, result of uh, DF and um, mount commands on ICD SX series. And as you can see, uh, this screenshot, so this, uh, these file systems are actually used on the, uh, our products. For example, uh, Slash DBs uh, uses a VFAT just for databases, and the Slash MIT Slash SD0 uh, uses uh, EBFAT because it's a, a content area. So, and uh, slash proc uses a proc FS. And next slide shows um, EB flat portings. And as you can see uh, in this chart, we implement the EB flat by using a, a virtual file system APIs. So, and similar to EMMC and SD drivers, the system, uh, the file system calls a uh, ROM API. So, for example, so mount and open read run write. And because the uh, ROM API support uh, UTF-16 only, so we added a conversion logic to UTF-8. Because UTF-8 is very easy to handle uh, inside operating system, including uh, libc. So we actually did not modify the so file system or, uh, nor uh, libc, so just added this yellow box. And as you can see, this uh, screenshot uh, so maybe here, so you can see a Japanese file name is, is supported. So let's move on to our uh, audio support. So, uh, and as I mentioned earlier, the microcontroller has a dedicated audio hardware logic, so such as MP3 encoder and decoder, to reduce the power consumption. And also, uh, as you can see in this chart, it has a unique uh, hardware feature, so called um, audio buffer, to support a flexible audio signal flow. And for example, so by setting audio buffer the register, uh, you can change a signal audio uh, flow so inside the microcontroller. And as for the driver implementation on the NATX, and actually the NATX hardware audio subsystem, but we introduced a new API so like Linux Arthurib to be more simple. And also the API supports a non-blocking mode as well. And this is an audio playback example, so using DSP. So in this example, so first, so CPU set up uh, audio block so inside the microcontroller, and also set up the external audio codex, which is not shown in this chart, and then boot the DSP. Then CPU reads the audio file on the storage device, and audio data is sent to a DSP uh, through the audio buffer. And then DSP decodes the audio frame, the, and finally PCM data is output to I2S0. Of course, actual uh, playback uh, is a little more complex. For example, as I said, uh, MP3 case, and MP3 playback case, uh, you, uh, MP3 hardware decoder is actually used. So, but you can understand how the audio playback uh, signal flow works so inside this microcontroller. And this is an uh, audio recording example. And in this example, so first, so CPU set up the audio box so inside the microcontroller, and also set up the external audio codex, so which is not shown in this slide. That's then uh, PCM data is from ITS0, and pre-processed by DSP. And finally, uh, then uh, PCM data is encoded by MP3 hardware encoder, 
And finally, uh, CPU writes IMC audio file into a file. And actually, our product has a recording monitoring feature. So uh, real audio signal flow is much more complex than this chart. So let's move on to um, power management part. So usually, so power management consists of the following techniques. Uh, for example, so clock editing, so which is a uh, disable clock uh, for unused blocks, and power gating, so which disable power for unused blocks, and DBFS and suspended regime, so which I will explain later. And this figure shows a power domain inside the microcontroller. For example, the microcontroller has uh, several power domains such as uh, the, uh, audio, SRAM, uh, USB, and the spare flash cache. And if the block is not used, the power should be disabled to uh, reduce uh, uh, power leakage. DBF stands for dynamic voltage and frequency scaling. And as I mentioned earlier, the microcontroller supports uh, two different voltage. And using a lower voltage can reduce uh, actual so power consumption. And as you can see uh, this chart, so we define the active mode and idle mode and define the, its clock table respectively. For example, active mode clocks are uh, 160 megahertz and 80 megahertz and so on. And based on the CPU so idle ratio, the clock um, control is done autonomously by DBFS. And as you can see uh, in this chart, actually it changed uh, internal divider and selector in this yellow box. And however, uh, the clock can also be boosted when, uh, for example, the key are uh, pressed or the white uh, loading application to uh, get a more quick response. So next I'll show the idle ratio calculation uh, used in DBFS. Actually, the NATX uh, had a CPU load monitoring, but uh, we found that uh, it's not accurate. But uh, because a CPU load in the IRQ hardware is not considered. So we implement a very simple uh, algorithms. And as you can see uh, this chart, so CPU issues, so WFY, so wait for interrupt to wait IRQ. Here we measure uh, uh, sleep time here, here and uh, in microsecond order. And then accumulate uh, this sleep time to get the idle time. So like this uh, equation. And finally, uh, idle ratio can be uh, calculated by uh, next formula. And to measure uh, this same time, so we use a hardware timer so instead of cystic in um, Cortex M3, because this hardware timer is not affected by the frequency uh, change. So it's very easy to calculate the sleep time. So next is a uh, uh, suspend and regime. As, and as I uh, wrote in the abstract, so we introduced a uh, white clock, so which is uh, Android developers are very familiar with. So actually, so we implemented a very similar API, so which Android kernel provides. And the mechanism is um, uh, that uh, if application sets a power state to mem, and uh, if uh, no wake locks uh, exist, then the system automatically enters into a sleep deep mode to reduce the power. And for example, so during audio playback, uh, the middleware acquires uh, its uh, wake lock to prevent from entering into a sleep deep mode. And if the uh, middleware to release a wake lock uh, when the playback stopped, and then uh, enter into a sleep deep mode so automatically. And here is the act actual implementation. So when entering into a sleep deep mode, the system power down uh, unused block and wait. So then uh, the system can be uh, wakened up by uh, interrupt, so such as GPIO. So finally, so before so restarting um, user run, the kernel timer is resynced to uh, resynchronize with RTC. So let's move on to our ELF support. So ELF stands for executable and linking and file format and used for application dynamic loading. 
And as I mentioned earlier, our system memory is uh, not so large. It's about uh, 1.6 megabyte, so not a gigabyte, of course. And uh, to overcome th this condition, so memory overlay technique uh, could be used, but we found that uh, uh, memory overlay is uh, not flexible. So, so we decided to use uh, so dynamic loading so with L, so which the NATX supports. So with this feature, so we can divide the one big application into more smaller ones. For example, so home application or settings application and so on. And also we can use um, separate so debug commands simultaneously. So in this screenshot, so you can see uh, several application is running as well as uh, so debug commands such as so free and PS. However, the NATX Elf loading was actually not so vast because uh, it was designed for uh, small memory systems. So we modified it to be fast. The following is uh, our approaches. So first one is a uh, section data cache, so which allocates a uh, big mem heap memory to hold um, its section table to reduce uh, EMMC access. Because See, uh, SRAM access speed is much, much faster than EMMC access speed. So the second one is a symbol name uh, replacement, so which shortens the, uh, its symbol name so by hashing so their names, then sort the, by the name. And as you can see uh, the example in this year of work, so p thread uh, cond auto also takes a set code, so can be replaced with so this hash code. And Actually, uh, we are also using um, C++ element with so template so in, uh, for uh, middleware and application development. So some symbol name is much longer. So for example, 20, 100 byte or 300 bytes. So this chart shows uh, how each approach uh, reduces um, uh, loading time. So actually, so section data cache has a big impact. See, original uh, loading time was more than 3,000 uh, milliseconds. But after applying these techniques, so actual loading time was improved to less than uh, 100 milliseconds. And so far, I've focused on uh, OS porting and enhancement. And from here, uh, I will explain about uh, some tools and testing. The first one is QMU. So QMU is an open source um, based uh, CPU emulator as we support many CPU um, architecture, including Cortex-M3. As motivation we using QMU was to port a uh, software, so such as Bluetooth stack or GUI toolkit. Actually, we had to finish porting the Bluetooth stack on QMU plus NatX, so before we received a PGA board. And, and audio screen actually worked on QMU plus NatX. And to get a uh, Bluetooth stack working on QMU, we had to change uh, SRAM size and fix uh, some bugs, for example, SD driver uh, and big issues. <coughs> so let's move on to our uh, C++ label. So in this project, we decided to use C++ label for middleware and application development to improve um, productivity so as well as the performance. So the following the main features of C++ label. So, for example, all the keyword is, uh, which is a uh, compiler determines its type. So for example, the first in this chart can be replaced with a second line. It's very simple. And also we can use a lambda expression and for, um, can define, uh, uh, to define your uh, function objects. The other features like uh, so smart pointers, which is implemented in standard uh, libraries can be used to avoid uh, memory leaks. And also we can use a move semantics, uh, which is to improve uh, uh, performance. And other keywords are also useful to, imp to improve productivity. And next slide shows um, C++ standard uh, library. And as I mentioned in previous slide, we are using a standard library such as uh, uh, STD, Concon, Unix, pointer or so on. And as you can see, this table, so there, is a, there are some open source based uh, C++ standard library. And finally, we decide to use uh, 
live C++ from LLVM projects because C++ eleven supports uh, fully uh, C++ is uh, fully supported and license is uh, BSC like and it's easy to port. And actually, we tried the uh, STL port before, but we found that uh, it's more difficult to support the C++ eleven on our protocol. So next uh, slide shows the code size reduction. So to reduce the code size, so first we started with uh, auto optimization and then applied uh, OS op option with uh, size optimization. And then uh, apply uh, GC sections, so which will remove uh, use uh, sections at link time. And finally, uh, we apply the uh, symbol name replacement, which I explained in previous slide. So this just shows the code size uh, Com comparison example for each techniques. And of course, the writing small code is much, much more important than, but you also have uh, to consider these techniques uh, which are very uh, in common. So as I explained in, in the NAT exporting, so we've been using so OpenOCD to debug software. And some uh, OSs like so Linux and uh, Free Artists are officially uh, supported by OpenCD. So, so this is very uh, useful to debug uh, such as dead deadlocks. So however, so NATX is not supported. So which means that uh, we cannot, uh, we can only debug the uh, current thread. So to support NATX, so we implement uh, uh, the code by ourselves. The approach is uh, uh, almost the same as uh, other RTOSs. So this screenshot shows a GDB window so running on Emacs because I have Emacs so very much, so I decided to use uh, this screenshot. So as you can see uh, this screenshot, you can see uh, all of uh, threads. And if you uh, click uh, select one thread, you can see uh, it's a uh, call stack here. And Actually, uh, we released a code on GitHub uh, last year. So if you are interested in this code, uh, please visit uh, uh, github.com slash Sony, and you can find uh, our uh, work. So this uh, slide shows uh, how we can analyze the runtime crash uh, with tools. So similar to Android and Linux, uh, uh, we implement the crash jump uh, mechanism and uh, tools to analyze tools. So this is a typical scenario. So if the crash happens on the target, the crash logs are stored in the RAM and automatically reboot that. Then a crash logs are stored on the uh, storage, so on EMFC. So then we can retrieve uh, its uh, crash logs by ADB, then analyze uh, the, the log so with uh, debug symbols. And this screenshot shows the actual uh, crash log, so which is analyzed with so debug uh, symbols and you can see a uh, stack trace uh, where the actually uh, crash happened. And next is the ADB support. And if you are familiar with uh, Android, so you might know uh, so what ADB is. So motivation is to uh, test the system uh, without proprietary tools because uh, ADB uh, from Android is uh, getting uh, standard. So we'd like to use uh, this ADB tool to, for example, uh, retrieve uh, internal logs and so on. So currently, uh, we support some minimum uh, features like push and pull and uh, shell with remote execution. So because this, uh, the feature is just a testing purpose. So the feature is disabled at the factory, so before shipping the products. And the, Actual implementation was not so difficult. So we reused the NATX so USB serial driver and modified the USB descriptor to pretend uh, ADB driver and implement uh, its protocol. So for example, the push and pull and shell protocol, so from the scratch. And actually this screenshot shows um, pu uh, pushing the hello application to the target and execute it's remotely. Actually, you can see a hello word is on the target. So next slide shows the integration testing. So as you can see uh, this figure, so we 
constructed so build and testing system with ADB and cloud-based uh, services such as GitHub. So we, uh, if a, a software engineer uh, pushes a code to GitHub and create a uh, pull request, then the system uh, automatically builds the target code and then uh, deploys the software to the actual uh, each product and then test the products. Uh, then test the products with ADB. So finally, uh, you can see as you can uh, you can see a test result so on Jenkins. In addition, the PCB tests uh, at the factory are done with ADB. Um, next slide shows uh, unit testing with Google Tests. And the Google Test is the Google's um, C++ testing framework. So we poured it on to our platform. So motivation is to use the, this framework is to find the back so early and refactor the code safely and so on. So to ex, uh, execute this test, we also use uh, ADB. As you can see uh, this screenshot, so first uh, build a hero test program, so then push the program to the target device with ADB, and finally uh, execute it remotely. And finally, uh, hero test is running on the target, and all tests are successfully completed. And this slide shows the DSP software development. Uh, so, so far, I explained the open source based software development, but unfortunately, uh, so we had to use uh, this uh, proprietary to, to develop a DSP code. So, however, so to improve our productivity so in DSP software development, so we implemented some uh, features to assist uh, software development, so DSP software development. Because DSP has to work with Cortex M3, as I mentioned in other example. So typical approaches is uh, like this. So first, so develop a DSP code on the simulator, and then run uh, the sample application on Cortex M3. So for example, so recording up or playback application. Then uh, load the DSP code and start the DSP. So finally, so continue the application on Cortex M3. So it's very simple, and we can easily to test uh, DSP code on our platform. So finally, I will show you uh, um, some short demo videos, which is all, uh, almost the same as uh, yesterday's uh, technical showcase. And the first video shows uh, ADB, and the first uh, loading and uh, DBFS, and the second one is um, um, stress testing tool, so like a, a monkey, monkey tool. So first, uh, this is uh, our product, IC recorder, so UX3. So there is no USB uh, ADB device is shown. So then connect to the host devices and ADB device. So you can see your ADB device is attached. Then so try to log in so via ADB, so ADB shell. So just log in completed. Then uh, try to uh, list the application to check its size. So just a copy and paste. And you can see uh, application size is almost uh, from uh, 80 to uh, 300 kilobyte. And you can also see a uh, uh, task list. And so then go back to, uh, this is a, so record application is running, then go back to home application is currently running. And then, yeah, setting application. So now home application is unloaded and new setting up application is now running. And then go back to home home and check uh, this DBFS command, which is not uh, demonstrated yesterday. So you can see uh, uh, CPU uh, idle ratio and as well as uh, its current uh, clock speed. Actually, uh, it's uh, currently uh, Playback uh, recording is started. So, and go back to our home. Actually, uh, clock is boosted now, and now slowing down to a lower clock. And then, yeah, BMS. Start. I think some uh, people uh, saw this BMS start yesterday. 
So now uh, playback is continuous, so you can see a block out is ha happening, and then go back to a stop uh, recording. So no, uh, no uh, block I/O happened. So next is a uh, monkey-like tool. So monkey-like uh, is a uh, randomly to generate a uh, input commands or input key uh, key sequences. So you can uh, easily uh, do a stress testing with this tool. So just uh, maybe soon we'll start the recording. Perhaps uh, rec option will be, rec key will be sent. Oh, okay, start uh, re recording. Because uh, rec key is uh, so, uh, input. So with this tool, uh, we did uh, so many uh, stress tests with this tool. For example, uh, if we did an uh, overnight test, uh, maybe uh, 40,000 events can be generated with this tool. And if, uh, with this tool, we can find uh, so many um, uh, critical bugs with this tool. So that's it. <laughs> so any questions regarding my question? And yeah. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, you said that uh, you have a GitHub set up with a lot of that work. Mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, what, what does the GitHub do? Ah, so your question is uh, regarding GitHub? OK. So actually, our uh, code is, uh, we are using so GitHub as private, private, oh. private, not public, sorry. Actually, yeah. And I have. Uh, so two two options uh, actually um, actually our code is uh, uh, on, on GitHub so in private repository but uh, we released one uh, source code so open OCD staff this is uh, now available on GitHub Sony this is a public staff yeah actually it's okay yeah please sorry the ADB. ah yeah. Your question is, uh, so ADB is uh, in open source. So sorry, uh, we are now not in open source now, and we are now uh, considering how to, uh, um, how to uh, and merge into uh, upstream. Yeah, this is ADB. Yeah, yeah. Even the device part? Yes. Okay. Yes. Actually, NatX is not, uh, this, this protocol is, uh, how to say, uh, maybe implementation itself is not so related to NatX, but we will, um, we will uh, contribute to a NatX Git repository. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Any questions? I have put Yes. In yes. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, uh, we are, as I said, the uh, some point. Uh, right. Actually, we released uh, three products, and last year uh, already uh, released one product, and this uh, year uh, we will release uh, two or three products, and also, but uh, currently, uh, uh, audio recorder and audio uh, player is supported. But in the near future, uh, we'd like to support more products rather than uh, audio products. So for example, uh, a network connected, uh, network connected devices and so on. Yeah. Any question? Ah, oh, great. Um, on your power savings, yes. what, um, uh, can you, what sort of ratio was that? On off time, um, it's um, very difficult to say. <laughs> yeah, actually, but um, actually, on off of uh, say um, actually, it depends on uh, it's um, so CPU load time, and it depends on, uh, for example, um, MPC playback case is very very um, CPU just um, send your uh, its uh, compressed data to. Her. 
DSP, and actually DSP is very uh, long in very low clock actually, and uh, uh, DSP and also uh, MP3 case uh, you, we can use uh, um, hardware deco decoder, and also uh, in recording system uh, we can use a hardware encoder. So uh, in that case, uh, CPU uh, idle time is maybe uh, around 95 or 97. Right? So such a uh, time is in idle. So idle means that, so we define the I it's idle clock. So maybe around uh, three or six megahertz. So very, very low clock. And, uh, but uh, in some cases, for example, uh, if we uh, push uh, some keys to change uh, its application or to redraw uh, its user interface, it may be more uh, CPU uh, load. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Any questions so far? Okay. So, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you.